Good. Good. Intro. Good. It's intro time. Shut, sh everyone shut up. Let's jump into our next story. Let's do it. What do you guys think? Should we do it? Do it. Totally, we, dude. We do it. Totally, dude. All right. So we've been seeing trending on X and on other platforms talking about uh, Paramount Plus's new series, Landman, uh, starring Billy Bob Thornton uh, as the main character. Um, wow. I'm, I watched the pilot last night, and I'm hard hooked. First off, before we watch, so we're going to pull up a clip here that's been circling the internet. Um, started a couple of days ago, but uh, it started a couple of days ago, but the, the show has been out for a couple of weeks. There have four episodes published at the time of this live stream, and I, I did not catch up on it because uh, Paramount Plus has released banger after banger, and yet they're still losing money, and they were in talks earlier in the year to like be bought out by potentially Max. Right, I mean, Paramount Plus was potentially going to go down, and I think they're probably still in discussions about, uh, like being bought out by other platforms and, st and studios to try to wrap into someone else. But Paramount Plus has released, in my opinion, some of the best TV shows we've gotten in the last couple of years. Um, I'm referencing to the fact that Tulsa King, with starring Sylvester Stallone, was in like the top five for streaming uh, in 2024, like the season two, the season two of uh. Tulsa King was in the top five for streaming in 2024. Um, you have Mayor of Kingstown, which was doing banger numbers on that show before Jeremy Reiner had his unfortunate uh, accident with the snowplow. Um, and then, it, but it, he's coming back to the show. My understanding is he's coming back for season three of that show. So, I mean, and now I have Landman. I watched the pilot and I'm hard hooked, guys. This show is awesome. Billy Bob Thornton uh, was also in the show Goliath, which I believe was an Amazon Prime project, not Paramount. I could have those flip-flopped. I sometimes get those two mixed up between Prime Video and Paramount+. It might have been Apple, actually. Uh, Goliath? I don't Wait, have... Did you see it? Goliath? I watched the whole okay. show. There's four... So there's... Oh, you, yeah, and you don't have Apple. So. I don't have Apple. So it's, it's definitely on one of those two platforms for sure. But uh, Goliath has four seasons. Billy Bob Thornton plays a lawyer in that in that show and he's awesome in it and i think the premise is so freaking entertaining uh so i i love goliath i thought it was so good so when i saw this uh this clip circling the internet about billy Bob thornton uh doing basically a monologue on windmills in texas i was i watched it and i was like holy shit that was one of the most well articulated arguments against windmills i have ever seen i mean there's plenty to argue about but it is so well put together. And on a TV show, it's kind of like a, it, it, the pilot episode shows so well the, the goods and the bads of the oil industry. And I, I, think, it's in, I think it's insane. It kind of reminds me of that, uh, that monologue that Jeff Daniels went on on that one fucking TV show that went around the internet forever about how America's not number one in like education and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He's just kind of like throwing down facts. Yeah. Well. well, I mean, honestly, I you're right. That monologue spread across the or that uh that scene spread across the internet pretty well as also. Um I had a lot of contention with some of the points he was making in it yeah, where not all of them I just genuinely disagreed and would love to have made an argument against it, but um I mean, education I'm sure one was definitely on point. We're dumb as fuck as a nation right now. Well, our <laughs> education is definitely in need of improvement. I'm not convinced that I'm not convinced that uh, we're the worst among the Western countries, but I think uh, there are definitely countries out there that are outperforming us for sure. Um, mostly Asian. Mostly Asian. It's the math. They do so good at math. <laughs> that racist to say? Can I say it's that? That's that positive racism, right? Is it, yeah, it's a positive racism. They're it's all a, engineers and doctors. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good stereotype. It's good. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be watching the uh, we're going to be watching this three minute scene from Paramount Plus's Landman and kind of reacting to it, talking you through. Um, with we, we've had some technical issues with X on audio, so bear with us, um, guys. We are going to pretty much mute while we play the first uh, so many seconds of this. I'll bring us back in to react to it. Um, but yeah, I'll be able to hear you. So just holler at me if you want me to pause it. But all right, here we go. God. 
God, they're massive. 400 feet tall. The concrete foundation covers a third of an acre and goes down in the ground 12 feet. Who owns them? Oil companies. We use them to power the wells. No electricity out here. We're off the grid. They use clean energy to power the oil wells? They use alternative energy. There's nothing clean about this. So I, I okay. So just uh, I that line um that line from there they use clean energy to power the oil wells was actually something that this poster Brent Bar uh, Brent Baker on X uh, had mentioned here calling that out. Um, yeah the the windmill things are the windmills are absolutely horrible. Like I love every time you talk to an environmentalist and then you just like yeah but they just ma they just genocide birds. And they're like, oh, uh, we don't care about that. We need to save the planet. It's like, oh. Yeah. We yeah. also fuck with whales and whatnot because they have them in the ocean. But there's that, and there's uh, solar powered. Not that fucking efficient either. No, it's, I love, there's a lot of arguments that Billy Bob Thornton's going to get into uh, just to make sure we kind of protect ourselves from copyright. We're pausing in between just to give it thoughts. But uh, Matt, have you seen anything about this show, even cl like clips, anything? I mean, did you, what did you know about just the uh, clips? Just the clips. So you had seen a one or two or clips flown around? Yeah, just a couple clips and Billy Bob doing what he does best. I love snarky comebacks. I yeah. Love Billy Bob Thornton is amazing in almost everything. I, I don't I cannot think of a single performance from Billy Bob Thornton that I didn't like. Now I'm sure they're I'm sure not everybody's a Billy Bob Thornton fan, but um he's I think he's object I think we can say he is objectively a very, very talented actor and he does a great job even if there's individual examples of people not preferring him as a person or as a, or like in a specific scene, he just does so well and carries his, his roles. So, so freaking successfully. Agreed. Well, we will jump right back into it. Please, Mr. Oilman, tell me how the wind is bad for the environment. Do you have any idea how much diesel they have to burn to mix that much concrete or make that steel and haul this shit out here and put it together with a 450 foot crane? You want to guess how much oil it takes to lubricate that fucking thing or winterize it? In its 20 year lifespan, it won't offset the carbon footprint of making it. And don't get me started on solar panels and the lithium in your Tesla battery. Okay, yeah. so so yeah, th those are good. So yeah, instantly, just simple points, right? Those are not the complex, like deep takes, right? It's the it takes so much to get this thing assembled. It takes so much to get this thing designed to make get this thing made, produce it, put it up, transport. It's the simple yeah, a lot stuff, of right? Thought process when it comes to clean energy doesn't go past the point that uh, she basically made getting out of the truck. It's like, tell me how the wind is bad for the environment. Then their mind just stops. Yeah. It's the concrete. It's, uh, it's the it's good. It's power stuff. Wind's good at power stuff. It's like, all right. Yeah. It's all in depth you're gonna go with it. That it's not a yeah, it's not an incredibly deep thought process there. It it really is two it's really two dimensional. And I mean, I think you had a lot of people who are skeptical about the like the green energy initiatives and I think most of the most of the arguments against the green energy initiatives have been proven correct. Um now I think even if you talk to someone who even if you talk to someone who hates the all the green energy initiatives is like the biggest anti green energy init uh, like initiative person that person will still agree with you that he would like he or she would like um you know clean water clean air like he, he like that person would want a healthy environment around them to live their life like even if you had like the oil billionaires they still don't want like the they still don't want pollutants or trash or garbage or bad air in their area where they exist. They're not oblivious to the fact right, that there are pollutions. Yeah. Dump shit down the other <laughs> pollute I, someone else's river or something. But. The the lithium car battery thing is the most insane thing to me. I'm just like, how have we not passed on that experiment yet? Like it's become mainstream and it's in I've seen several references to this in television shows about how an electric vehicle catches fire and it will burn for 
I've heard I've heard it will burn for a week. I don't think that uh, that's probably it constantly restarts itself on fire too. Right. I've understood that that's hyperbole. Um, I don't know what the actual facts are on how long a electrical fire inside of like an electric vehicle lithium battery takes to burn out. Where does the lithium come from? Uh, slave mines in Africa, I think. The Energizer Correct. Bunny. The Energizer Bunny <laughs> delivers <laughs> eggs at Christmas. <laughs> it's all, it's, I'd hate to call it like propaganda, but it is. It's just like you get the, like, people to think a certain way about certain items, and then they kind of stick that way. It's like, we all know how phones are made, but for some reason, like, people that are, like, against all this shit are still, like, well, I gotta get the new iPhone 26 or whatever the fuck it is. Yep. I love the, uh, did you, did either of you guys, I'm going to make a reference to a clip that's been online. If you haven't seen it, no worries, but it's, uh, it was this mayor of a town, I think in Colorado. Um, and she was talking about how they were putting in these new charging stations for, uh, electric vehicles. And they were so proud. They did like a ribbon cutting ceremony. They were taking questions from journalists there. And one of the journalists asked, where does the energy for these things come from? And they they said, uh, I think it said they, it was the, uh, the, a local power plant. And then he asked a follow up question as well, what, what, what runs the power plant? And she's like, coal. And he's like, oh. it's like, it's like, what? <laughs> and like, I love it. Yeah, we're just going about this in a very zigzag kind of way. Yeah. It's the mental gymnastics to like, I'm okay. In complete fairness, until I started to actually look into these green initiatives a lot more closely. I was probably in that position where it's like, oh, um, solar panel charges, car, solar panel runs electricity in house. Cool. That that sounds good to me. Wind, oh, it's up in the it's up in the air. Um, you know, wind comes and goes. It's not like a consistent thing you can depend on, but it sounds like it's renewable. It sounds like we can put up wind farms to get the maximum output. Now it's just about finding batteries that can store the energy well. Cool. Like those sound good. And then I started to look into. Then I started to look into and understand like the the cost of development, the ro the ROE on energy, um, like what it takes to construct them, and how much like dirty fuel you're using, if you want to call it dirty fuel, in order to actually produce this. And I'm like, wait a minute, the math ain't math in here. I know I'm not Asian, but that math ain't math. <laughs> I'm not Asian. That math don't math. <laughs> uh, I went to school in America. I went to American school. All right, let's keep going. We got a little more to go. He's making great points. Let's, see, let's keep it. And never mind the fact that if the whole world decided to go electric tomorrow, we don't have the transmission lines to get the electricity to the cities. It'd take 30 years if we started tomorrow. And unfortunately for your grandkids, we have a 120 year petroleum based infrastructure. Our whole lives depend on it. And hell, it's in everything. That road we came in on, the wheels on every car ever made, including yours, it's in tennis rackets and lipstick and refrigerators and antihistamines, pretty much anything plastic, your cell phone case, artificial heart valves, any kind of clothing that's not made with animal or plant fibers, soap, fucking hand lotion, garbage bags, fishing boats, you name it, every fucking thing. Wheels. Every fucking thing. I just want to throw out real quick that yeah, everything. But can I get uh, some input from you guys on how well these freaking scenes are shot? Like the wind, the the wind blowing in both of their the like faces. Great. The music's amazing. The sun in the background on Billy Bob Thornton. The the paneling of like the angling of the shots. I mean, it's just well directed. Uh, taking apart the taking away the energy debate and argument from this. This is such a well shot and such a well produced scene, well directed. It's another Taylor Sheridan show. He did Yellowstone, fucking 1923, 1883. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of good shit. Paramount, yeah, Paramount is just kicking ass with the, the shows they're putting on it. I, again, it's a shame that there's even discussions about them shutting, like, like selling themselves off to something else. I mean, if I don't know what it would take for them to be profitable. That's, I mean, Maybe five shows that are bangers isn't enough, but then I'm wondering, like, well, no, what is? You're competing with all the other big dogs, too. So. True. That, People still it's exist. like the only reason Apple is still around is because it's subsidized by Apple, like Apple TV. That's the only reason why it's around. It's not making money. 
uh, Amazon Studios doesn't make money. It's just they're like pet. They're pet projects for these billion dollar corporations that just have the money to do it. Yeah, like was it a uh, who was the Jeff Bezos buying the Washington Post? That was that the I think that's the article or the uh, publication he purchased. Like it's like oh I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> it's like billionaires yeah. just buying well, like, I mean, buying yeah. stuff up is fun. I like watching that happen. Yeah, and if uh, like say Amazon puts out a show and the general public say it's dog shit, and then you go on Rotten Tomatoes or whatever, and it's great, it's because Amazon also owns Rotten Tomatoes. But I think it's IMDb. I don't. Th- I think Amazon owns IMDb. I don't think they own Rotten Tomatoes. Is it? I I, I know think it's one of those websites. I I'm actually pretty sure it's IMDb, but I don't know if they could. Maybe they also own Rotten Tomatoes, and I just don't know that. But I know they. I know it's IMDb because they were. Uh, there was with Amazon's uh, Rings of Power. This was a whole big thing because they were using IMDb to actually get rid of the the bad reviews of the show in season one. So when we were talking about season one coming out the that year, um, that was going on when with uh, IMDb. Rotten Tomatoes has always been kind of a little bit weird with their ratings and a little hard to trust, but I think uh, more or less, okay, yeah, yeah. You're right. depending on which category you're looking at, whether it's audience score or review, and the co- the way they contrast against each other is usually your metrics for how you can determine if a show is going to be good or not. It's like, wh- how far apart are they on this idea? Like uh, when Deadpool and Wolverine came out, Rotten Tomatoes had a almost uniform answer of it was like in the 90th or high 80 percentile. And both the reviews and the audience or critic reviews and the audience score were both ridiculously high. And then you have shows that it's like the audience scores 12 percent and the reviews are 90 percent. So it's Rotten Tomatoes is a weird one. But uh, all right. Weird. It's weird. Weird. All right. Let's see if we can finish this one up. And you know what the kicker is? We're going to run out of it before we find its replacement. It's the thing that's going to kill us all. As a species. <laughs> no, the thing that's going to kill us all is running out before we find an alternative. And believe me, if Exxon thought them fucking things right there were the future, they'd be putting them all over the goddamn place. Getting oil out of the ground's the most dangerous job in the world. We don't do it because we like it. We do it because we run out of options. And you're out here trying to find something to blame for the danger besides your boss. There ain't nobody to blame but the demand that we keep pumping it. Fucking consumers, it's your fault. And the birds. He didn't mention the birds. And the birds. And the birds. Can I get an RIP well, in the chat the for the birds? I mean, damn, guys. <laughs> birds aren't real, man. Birds are just... <laughs> Use them to make the birds. <laughs> yeah, made by the government. Birds fly south for the winter to have their batteries changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How else do you think it works? I do love the bird uh, conspiracy theory. That is one of my favorites. I love that one. <laughs> that one's so good. I mean, the... First off, like, I think green energy... I would love to know where I'm... Like, I would love to see into the future on this one a little bit. The Nuclear. Nuclear. That's what I'm going to talk about. Because, like... I want Nuclear. I'm looking at nuclear and I'm like, okay, what will I know about the dangers or like like risks associated with nuclear in a year, two years from now, three years from now? What will I know that I don't know now about nuclear? My understanding now is that the way we, we are successfully capable of producing energy from nuclear is clean and has minimum environmental risks. And we do it successfully with a lot of legislation and restrictions around it such that the risk associated with it is mitigated and not really present anymore. I could be wrong about all three of those things, and I wouldn't know it right now. In a year, will I know? I, and, but I, I do understand that like, if we could create smaller power, like just small power plants, like individual power plants that are spread everywhere rather than one ridiculously powerful one in like the the west, the middle, and the east. I mean, you, I mean, I don't know how much one big nuclear power plant can also power either. This is this is the kind of thing we would need Slim on because he's an electrician. He understands how nuclear energy works, how right? Nuclear energy works, yeah. Nuclear. They coincide. It's the same, pretty much. <laughs> he'll tell me. Uh, he'll he'll know. But uh, I would love to see if that is sustainable. If it would work, because my under I mean, my understanding is that they basically just take the waste create a cement uh 
container for the waste and bury it. And then I'm like, okay, that doesn't feel like it's the best way to do it, but maybe there's literally no other option. I was like, if we're going to be mass mass generating energy from this, how much of that are we going to have to do? And why are we assuming that that won't eventually break away or like, like why wouldn't a cement structure break after a hundred years, right? Like it'll be something our grand grandkids, grandkids will have to deal with, but why are we assuming that that won't seep and leak and break and crack after decades? So I, I don't know. Maybe I maybe I'm just wrong on this. I don't know about the nuclear energy thing enough to be like, that's the solution. But I feel like it's the best. I feel like it's the greenest energy that has been introduced to me that makes the most sense so far. So I I'm receptive. I'm very receptive to it. And I've I've said as much, like in personal conversation, that like nuclear makes the most sense to me. But I I would love to know more. I would love yeah, to know. I'm gonna do a bit more research, but I know we got aircraft carriers, submarines, power plants, and whatnot. All all run on nuclear and do just fine. I mean, look at the Fallout universe; they had nuclear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that went great. Yeah, that yeah, worked so well. Just fine. <laughs> we don't want a post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. It'd be fun. All right. Um. So thoughts on thoughts on land uh landman. Are, are you guys gonna be checking out the series and watching the actual show? I I'm I'm watching the pilot, finish the pilot, and I'm gonna be checking out the rest of the show. I am hard hooked, like instantly hooked on the show. I think Billy Bob Thornton is nailing it. I think this scene is not an isolated scene. I think it pops up because it's uh relevant in the world of like politics and government, um, and that's why it flew around everywhere. But I think the show is really well directed. The cast is um, is very good. This is an insane power cast. I love this show so far. Um, I agree on everything, but I will not be watching it simply because you're not a TV guy. It's another, it's a one, yes, two, <laughs> another platform that I have to pay for. Pass. Gotcha, Cody. I'll probably be checking it out. Everyone says it's good. I think it's like three or four episodes in right now. Yes. Yep. Four as of last night when I started the pilot. I don't know what day the new episodes come out yet. I'll I'll look at that and find out. But as of yesterday, four episodes and there's out. There's nothing else to watch right now. <laughs> right. And uh, I need a palate cleanser after Arcane season two. <laughs> this is this will be it. This is so far. This is doing really well. I'm I'm loving this this show so far. So yeah, guys, check out Landman. Um, strong recommend, at least as far as he, as the pilot. Uh, it's a good hook, good premise. Billy Bob Thornton's crushing it. The cast is very, it's very much a power cast, and yeah, it's uh picking up in popularity just due to the fact that it's talking about pretty much mainstream relevant issues right now. All right, 